Good day, I'm Mike Richards, Technical Officer for CIRM. Today I'd like to do a presentation about the uh, CIRM uh, Cyber Risk Code of Practice. For those attendees who were here at last year's Digital at Sea Asia, please be assured this is uh, not the same presentation. Uh, I would like to also highlight other work uh, that CIRM has uh, undertaken and continues to undertake that uh, supports this uh, Cyber Risk Code of Practice. For those who are not present at last year's event, and as a little fresher for all those that were, I'd like to start by informing you of what uh, CRIM is and uh, what it does. We're an international non-profit association of marine electronics companies. We're a non-governmental organization that's consultative status at the IMO, with more than 100 members that comprise of uh, equipment designers and manufacturers, uh, service providers, system integrators, and software development companies. Marine electronics is a very broad scope and potentially could include uh, systems such as propulsion on some vessels. So to clarify, CRIM is focused on navigation equipment and systems and radio communication and GMDSS equipment. Our board of directors is currently comprised of some of the more recognizable names in the industry. So what we do is represent the uh, marine electronics industry internationally, and we contribute to development of regulation standards. We provide a way for our comp member companies to exchange ideas and opportunities, and provide specialist information to our members. In uh, February 2020, CRIM released its Cyber Risk Code of Practice for Vendors of Marine Electronics Equipment and Services with the company guideline document on implementing the Cyber Risk Code of Practice. These documents are available uh, freely to download for the CRIM website. For those that are not familiar with the documents, there are six principles presented in the code that we consider the foundation of uh, cyber risk management. Uh, these are the adherence uh, to applicable cyber risk standards and recommendations and guidance. These standards typically dictate what needs to be done. Uh, there's further guidance on how best you could comply to these standards in the form of frameworks, of which there are several available, such as the uh, NIST uh, Cybersecurity Framework of the US, or the UK National Cyber Security Centre Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus. Uh, default cyber secure. It should be assumed that uh, equipments or on ships or processes can never fully be cyber secure. However, equipment should have a default of being as secure as it's possible for it to be. A simple example would be not having equipment installed with default passwords on equipment and uh, all passwords being unique to that uh, equipment, even though this would create creates additional overhead in tracking all those passwords. Confidentiality, we feel, is another principle of cyber security. An example would be the prevalence of phishing emails uh, that has demonstrated bad actors can uh, attempt to exploit any information that they can. Despite all guidance and advice to the contrary, people will still um, create, um, for example, passwords that have uh, the two weak, including spouse dates of birth or pet names. Therefore, it's important uh, confidentiality is accounted for in cy any cyber risk management plan. Quality is a foundation for cyber risk management. It's another thing we consider an important principle. It allows uh, for the identification of objectives, determination of uh, processes and resources required to achieve those objectives. An example that we give in our um, document is the quality management system ISO 9001. Software update and vulnerability handling. Well, as well as ensuring new equipment meets uh, all cybersecurity requirements, it is important to identify what fixes can be made to historic products in the form of firmware and software updates. Some instances of vulnerability will not be identified until a uh, product has been released, and uh, no matter how good the robust uh, the testing process might have been. And finally, the last principle will be continuous development. Uh, the last point is raised that cybersecurity is a moving landscape. New risks are constantly being discovered. Defenses to those risks when they need to be developed. The code of practice reminds me that, that the efforts must be made to stay in date with these emerging threats, vulnerabilities, uh, developments. So, 
Since the release of the uh, CRM Cyber Risk Code of Practice, there have been many other developments in the uh, field of maritime cyber security. Uh, for example, there's IAX Recommendation 166, Recommendation on Cyber Resilience, IAX Unified Requirement E26 and E27, which is Cyber Resilience of Ships and Cyber Resilience of Onboard Systems and Equipment, respectively. Additionally, there's IAX Recommendation 171, which is recommendation on incorporating cyber risk management into safety management systems, which was released in response to the IMO resolution MSC 428, uh, Maritime Cyber Risk Management in Safety Management Systems. And all these releases are just from one organization. However, the document I wish to present further uh, is ISO 24060 uh, 2021, which is uh, basically a ship software logging system for uh, operational technology. ISO 24060 is based on a uh, 2017 CRIM BIMCO industry standard for software maintenance procedures. ISO 24060 was first published in July 2021 and CRIM was part of the team that helped develop this standard. The title of the standard is Ship Software Logging System for Operational Technology. So to know the scope of the standard, we should consider what operational technology is. ISO defines operational technology as the hardware and software used to manage physical processes um, through uh, monitoring and or the control of physical devices. So these could be operate, uh, items on a ship such as uh, pumps, uh, valves, engines, machinery, um, or systems such as bridge, cargo, handling and management systems, machinery management, uh, power management systems, safety management systems, uh, passenger services systems uh, on cruise ships, for example. Um, while CRM's focus is on navigation and communication systems, the standard covers far, far more. The standard defines a uh, ship software logging system um, software that will be able to record software versions for equipment with updatable software. It will be able to set a initial log entry when equipment is first installed or detected. It will include a repository uh, of electronic services report that can be associated with log entries and can automatically log entries uh, reports sent by the equipment. The SSLS is designed to be on a ship's network and to be able to automatically log reports sent by the equipment, as well as initial log entry when the equipment is first detected uh, or installed. So to do that, and there needs to be some sort of universal message uh, with uh, this data available. ISO 24060 requires that SSLS systems should be capable of reading creating log entries from the verse sentence or version sentence which is specified in IEC 61162-1. It should be possible to create manual logs. It should be noted that um, most current equipment won't be able to do this. It's very much uh, the automatic part, very much a requirement or provision for future equipment. As well as the equipment details that can be passed by the version sentence, the SSLS will have additional forms, uh, fields for manual entry, such as category of entry, of which I provided some examples, uh, or even for uh, full service reports in various uh, formats. Again, examples provided. So how is uh, ISO uh, 24060 and CRM cyber code of practice linked? Well, if your equipment uh, meets ISO 24060, uh, then there's a good chance it'll meet the majority of the CRM cyber risk code of practice principle five, which is the part that refers to uh, software updates and vulnerability handling. The future of the CRM working group relates to this. Uh, well, BIMCO has established an industry working group on software maintenance and CRM is still an active participant in this. The group has been tasked with adapting the CRM uh, BIMCO industry standard on software maintenance of shipboard equipment into a proposal for a draft IMO guidelines or requirements on shipboard software maintenance. It was the intention of this working group to submit a draft proposal as an input to MSC 107, which is due to be held in June 2023. 
Additionally, CRM will be uh, revising its cyber risk code of practice in the future to ensure it stays relevant and represents good practice. So this concludes my presentation regarding uh, CRM and its work on the cyber risk in the maritime industry. <laughs>